Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So far in the analysis of individual demand, we have discussed the concepts of the utility, the law of diminishing marginal utility, cardinal and ordinal utility and then we have discussed the consumer behaviors analysis through cardinal utility approach. Now, I will move on to the analysis of consumer behavior using the ordinal utility approach. In the previous lecture, I have discussed the ordinal utility approach and its assumptions. Then the most important tool that we use in ordinal utility that is indifference curve, indifference schedule and indifference map. I have also discussed the diminishing marginal rate of substitution. So today I will discuss the budget line or budgetary constraint and then the consumer's equilibrium using indifference curve analysis. But in order to understand the consumer's equilibrium in ordinal utility or indifference curve analysis, we must first understand the budget line because it is both the budget line as well as the indifference curve that decides the equilibrium, consumer's equilibrium in this analysis of consumer behavior using ordinal utility approach. So, once again, alone the indifference curve will not be able to give us the consumer's equilibrium. Okay, so we have already seen the consumer's equilibrium and its conditions in case of cardinal utility. Now, we will discuss that in case of indifference curve analysis. So, let me tell you what is budgetary constraint or budget line. This budgetary constraint or budget line is also called as the price line. Okay, why? Because it simply gives us the various combinations of two commodities that a consumer can purchase given his limited income. What does it mean once again? Suppose let's say a person has an income of rupees 10,000 per month. Okay, 10,000 per month. And if the prices of each shoe, one unit or one pair of shoe is suppose 1000 rupees, okay. So with that income of 10,000, let's say if he wants to purchase or consume only the shoes, he wants to purchase the shoes only with all of his income, then he may get 10 pairs of shoes, okay. But at that time, he will have no money left to buy any other thing. In this case, we have second commodity as clothes. So, we get a point here on y-axis that 10, 0 means 10 units of shoes and 0 units of clothes because his income has been exhausted. That is why we called it budgetary constraint because you are always limited by your money income because money income will be limited or it will be constant for a period of time. You do not have all the money in the world with you to spend. If that was the case, again, we would not need the whole subject economics. But that is not the case, unfortunately. So, we have limited amount of money and we have to make use or make the best use out of our money so that we are fully satisfied. So, common sense says that nobody is going to be happy just spending all of his money on one commodity only. However, even two commodities are not enough, but just to make uh, things easier, we have taken uh, the two commodity model. So, another uh, point uh, combination is here 8 and 1 in which you can purchase 8 amount, 8 units, 8 pairs of shoes and that will uh, have you 8000 rupees and now you will be left with rupees 2000. So, the price of clothes, suppose let's say is uh, rupees 2000 per clothing item. So, you can purchase 8 units of shoes or two, 1 unit of clothes. So, this is another combination. So, similarly, we have this combination such as 6, 2, 4, 3, 2, 4 and 0, 5. At this extreme end, you will buy all, you can spend all your money on the clothing item. You can buy 5 units of clothes but 0 unit of shoes. 
सो बेसिकली दीज आर दी वेरियस कॉम्बिनेशन दैट यू कैन स्पेंड योर मनी ऑन एंड इफ यू पुट टूगेदर ऑल दी डॉट्स यू गेट अ लाइन दैट इज कॉल्ड द बजट लाइन नो वट एवर मनी योर मनी इज टेन थाउजेंड ओके सो यू कैन ओनली स्पेंड टेन थाउजेंड सो यू कैन ओनली हैव दीज टाइप्स ऑफ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू कमोडिटीज नाउ इन डिफरेंस कर Moving on to indifference curve, what does it give us? We already know that indifference curve gives us again gives us the combination of two commodities. But the best part in this that whichever combination we use, the total satisfaction will remain same. So it does not matter if you use the first combination or the second combination or the third combination. So when we collate both these line, the budget line. simply the budget line and the indifference curve the point at which it becomes tangent to each other here it is e this is the equilibrium okay so this is the point where the consumer will find the equilibrium means consumer has maximized his or her satisfaction level with the given amount of income money income means this is the ic curve 2 this indifference curve 2 if it becomes tangent to the budget line it means if you choose this combination or if you choose this combination or if you choose this combination any of the combination on this ic2 curve you will get the same amount of satisfaction but if you wish to choose suppose this combination of commodity x and commodity y you can do that but budget line is somewhere below this it means money income does not allow you to spend that much amount of money on commodity x and commodity y you have to have more income for that so you cannot purchase it because of the budgetary constraint that is why it is very important that the indifference curve can be collate or become coincident or become tangent to the budget line because in reality you can choose only this particular combination and the, why we call it as a consumer's equilibrium because on this ic curve again i am telling that on this whole curve ic2 it does not matter whichever combination a consumer chooses his satisfaction will be max same so he is indifferent so it does it won't matter to him he would not argue that i want to choose or he would not be dissatisfied by choosing the combination at the point e because this point or this point or this point or this point all of these combination of commodity x and commodity y is going to give him the same kind of satisfaction because we know that the total utility that a person gets from any of the combination on the indifference curve remains equal for this particular ic curve now you may be confused why we have another ic curve because we can have different different higher level of satisfaction at higher ic curves we can have various different combinations of ic curves this ic curve will give uh, total utility which will be lesser than the total utility of ic curve 2 and the total utility of ic curve 3 will be greater than the total utility of ic curve 2 okay so that is another matter but and of course the consumer wants to maximize their total utility but again it the a practical thing is that you cannot exceed your purchasing combination by your income so budget line here plays the most important role in deciding the equilibrium the same thing i have written here that what are the two conditions of consumer's equilibrium in the indifference curve analysis the two conditions first is the budget line should be tangent with the indifference curve and the indifference curve sh should be convex to origin because we'll we'll see there are different kinds of indifference curve as well sometimes it takes a different shape and it becomes concave this is not the matter of this particular video but what happens those ic curves which has different shape these are actually the exceptions okay so here we are not talking about exceptions we are talking about the normal scenario or the normal good things 
so that that is also uh, an important thing to understand that the ic curve is convex to the uh, point of origin means we are talking about not the exceptions but the normal things but the or most important condition is that the budget line should be tangent with the end difference curve and another point i would like to tell is when the budget line is tangent to end difference curve the end difference curve in itself shows that the marginal rate of substitution between these two commodities you know this two is equal to the marginal the price or the utility that you derive from each other okay so that is we have already discussed in in difference curve why the various combinations give the ultimate total utility equal total utility because the rate of substitution is something that a consumer is willing to give up the one commodity for the other because he is satisfied by using that particular commodity and he wants to switch to the other commodity okay so that is the phenomena that is that goes behind it that we have already discussed in marginal rate of substitution so uh, ic curve marginal rate of substitution and why in difference curve ic curve uh, gives makes consumer indifferent towards various combination is not actually indifferent the consumer is getting same amount of happiness or satisfaction from using all the different types whichever combination he uses he is going to get same amount of happiness or satisfaction so he is happy either way so that's why it is said that he is indifferent okay so i see curve and the budget line both of these things together decides the consumer's equilibrium in case of the ordinal utility approach now once we have the consumer's equilibrium now we can further use it in order to derive the demand function for the individual that we will discuss in the subsequent videos i hope this is clear so far thank you